Welcome back, everybody. We've got Steven and Jenna on the interview couch right now, and they're the brain people, the, the brain trust, <laughs> behind a Spectrums, the musical app that we talked a little bit earlier about uh, with Jeff. And so it's been funny because there's been a lot of musically inclined people coming in, and now we're talking about a musical product. But mm. this product is grounded in a lot of science, a lot of like educational theories, too. Can you walk us through about what we're about to see? And tell us a little about yourselves as well. Sure. So I'm Steven. I'm, I'm the founder of Spectrums. Um, and yeah, the, the whole point is you can tap on any colors and each color you can program your own sounds or musical loops or like tons of other things like you, you can record your own sounds. We have fun things in the app like animal sounds and uh, other random things like that. Um, and the goal is to just like make music really accessible. You can just play it on anything. And it's just a really, it's just a fun way to interact with music. Cool, and it's a way to make your environment part of your create creativity, Absolutely. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what about for you? Like, what's like, what's your favorite part? So, you've got a musical background. Yeah, we've yeah. been talking. We were both uh, music people from yeah. CU, <laughs> uh, and uh, now that now you're doing something in music, really great job, by the way. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, yeah, that was definitely an unexpected part. You know, because when you're getting a music degree, you don't exactly expect to work in tech or have mm -hmm. your life in tech but I think I'm kind of uh, living proof about how like of how things are changing in the education space in the workspace you know tech jobs are more in demand now yeah and you know to be able to be a part of that was completely unexpected but Totally cool, nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> totally cool indeed. And so, like, uh, Steven, I'm interested to see how you guys met because you yeah. guys have done uh, Spectrums together mm -hmm. um, pre Sphero, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Before we joined Sphero. Yeah. So, um, basically, I, I, so I, I'm a, I'm, I studied mechanical engineering, so I had more of a technical background. So, I, I was just developing the, basically a way to make drumming super portable, like just focusing on drums. But I knew there was like a market for just everyone, not just drummers like people that play piano, guitar, and other kinds of music, learn other musical concepts. So I was looking for like someone to join the team who had a musical background and Jenna was like perfect. Uh -huh. um, we, we actually met through a, stu a student business competition. Um, that's at, awesome. Which is, yeah, that's yeah. The, a new venture challenge. Okay, okay. Yeah, and yeah. In the music school. So I was, yeah. I was, actually Jenna was giving me a talk about a previous startup that she worked on. And so mm -hmm. um, we just joined from there and then she's been working since then on building out like our music education kind of side of spectrums and more adding more like um, kind of musical concepts to the app and things like that. That's awesome. And so uh, in terms of what your role is, uh, we've got the engineer, we got the, the science guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then what are, what are you uh, bringing to the table here? Well, my official title is education content manager. Mm -hmm. So um, usually what I work on uh, most predominantly are activities that are used in a music classroom. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also exploring a lot of um, activities and use for activities in other places like special education, um, language arts, math. Um, but I mean, music is our primary focus and that's um, very evident like when you play with like you play with the rings like using apps and stuff but we are working on a variety of different things because I, the most important thing is that um you trigger sounds by playing on colors not like just musical notes or not just percussion but um one of my particular favorite parts of playing with the app is the ability to record your own sounds mm -hmm. um and i mean like i think that's the reason why that's my favorite is that you know like when I was a little kid, my brother and I used to play um, with the talk boy, like from Home Alone 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. we'd like, we'd speed up our sounds and slow down our sounds. <laughs> I remember it was like green, and, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 I think I had the same point. And this, the thing I love most about it is that you can still kind of do that, except you can use it for amazing educational purposes yeah. instead. Well, we've heard a lot about how this thing can work. Let's see it work in action sure, right absolutely. now. So, uh, Steven, let's, uh, get, let's get that demo going and just yeah. walk, walk us through what you're doing. So, uh, first we have like our mix app, which is really meant for anyone to just get in there and sort of remix uh, songs and, and play beats. So, all you need to do is you tap on some colors and that kind of brings in these loops. And which is like the top of this play pad, you can kind of turn on the loops. And then you can trigger samples. So the really cool thing about what you're doing right now is the sound sounds a lot. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, the sounds like feel very complicated coming out, but your actions that you're inputting don't look complicated at all. Yeah, it's just simple. You're just yeah. hitting colors, like you know, you can. And you're and basically those are your samples. 
but then the top bars they kind of automatically synchronize all the beats so you don't have to do much you just kind of you can kind of t t time them yourself but mm -hmm. it the, the app like lines everything up for you so even if you're a beginner you can kind of remix songs and yeah you're making it so like whatever you make is probably going to sound good, yeah right? but you still have a, a creative flexibility to add your own stuff and turn the loops on and off when you want Super cool. And so, Jenna, what about the educational uh, aspects of what we just saw? Like, where do you see that falling in either your private lesson or your music class at school or even in your, like you said, your language arts class? Well, there are so many different possibilities for use in a classroom. Um, we're really only just touching on um, just a small part of that right now. We still have a lot of exploration to do and a lot of user testing to do. But I actually uh, brought some stuff with me, um, <laughs> some cards that we've been making uh, that both Stephen and I have actually been collaborating on. Um, so here are a couple of activities we have here. This is our mystery song. And on the back here, um, what you basically do is just play these dots and you have to figure out um, oh, like, as see, you're going I along. So, actually, like, so uh, John had me do that earlier, and I was <laughs> oh, like, really? I'm not, I'm not like like early, like early on. Yeah. And I was like, I was a music major. This will be easy, <laughs> and I didn't get it. I couldn't figure it out. And so, um, <laughs> well, no, and, 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 the, and the reasoning why is because I was like, it's this song, and I was yeah. like making it that way, yeah. and it was yeah. not that song. And so that was user error for sure. But I can, yeah. So it's just these dots that you play in order, so you can. It tells you how many times to hit each dot. So. And you kind of you have to figure out the rhythm, but it gives you the notes. And yeah, that's just one example. We have we have a lot. Like there's one that's uh, more sight reading based. So yep. So yeah. you don't actually play on the notes. See, this is different because the dots are big enough that you can actually play on them. But we also have a different setup where we um, color in mm -hmm. the actual notes here, and you use that as a guide when you're playing on the play pad. Yeah. And that's actually been coming into general piano teaching as well, mm -hmm. like using the iPad and using color recognition to teach yeah, notes first. Yeah. And so I, I definitely see the advantages there. And for those of you at home who don't know what sight reading is, sight reading is when you look at a piece of music for the very first time mm -hmm. and play it right away and see how good you do. Um, and so uh, in, outside of sight reading, this is all, you know, like you said, the musically based thing. Mm -hmm. What are the applications outside of that? So, yeah, I mean, basically, there's like a lot of applications. Maybe a, a simpler one for like a younger age group is just like learning colors. Mm -hmm. like I'll show you an example. Um, and this is also, um, Stephen's going to show like an example of what you can do when you record your own sounds in the app, which so is, red, yeah. Orange, blue, blue. So it just, tells, <laughs> it just tells you the color of what you tap. Yellow, turquoise, green. Turquoise, advanced, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's kind of a tough one. <laughs> but yeah, so it can And teach. that's my voice. Yeah, yeah. So. That's awesome. So there's basic lessons like that where you can, kids can just go up to random objects and tap it and get like, you know, get an idea of what, what the sounds of the colors are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys saw that, but Steven just scanned in uh, that paper yeah. and yeah, uh, it, it appeared right on the app. So it's all done for you. You know, something that um, I've noticed in, in my time as a teacher is a lot of times the uh, adults in the room don't want to learn something new. It's, it looks too hard, mm -hmm. and especially when it comes to technology, right? Why should I spend the time learning a new product mm -hmm. when I know this other thing works, right? And so mm -hmm. what would you say to that group? I would probably say that with Spectrums, I, f I feel like the barrier to entry is a lot lower um, and a little bit easier to access um, than a lot of other technology products mm -hmm. that you'd have to incorporate in the classroom. But another thing, especially um, incorporating it in the music classroom, is that it's kind of an all-in-one. So it's a way of learning melody, harmony, and percussion using one ring rather than buying like a ton of instruments to do mm -hmm. all of those different things. Oh, that's true. I didn't even think about yeah. the, the money you're saving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With like not buying, you know, my parents bought me a, a super expensive trumpet in the fifth grade. I ended mm -hmm. up majoring yeah. in tuba, mm -hmm. right? And <laughs> yeah. So uh, that would have been awesome for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the goal is to sort of lower the barrier to entry like um i mean it's not going to replace a piano or a drum set in any no. means um and it's not meant to teach piano or teach drums but it's sort of meant to get kids like into music quickly you know without much cost and um in a fun way so it's i guess like for a classroom i, I mean you it's not as like straightforward as playing a piano you have to you know connect it but it's we try to make that super simple and like we do things like scanning the card mm -hmm. and it sets it up for you so yeah and why is that important why is music something that we should be looking at right now in terms mm -hmm. of like this product and how it's gonna help yeah. my child or my friend uh just be better yes yeah, so well, you want to go first I, I was just going to say, you know, music programs are severely underfunded. You mm -hmm. know, music teachers don't get enough funding for their classroom. True. And 
you know, I, I think this is a very accessible, portable way of um, not only bringing all of these different facets of music into the classroom, but it's a great way to bring STEAM into a music classroom. Mm. Mm -hmm. Which I yeah. don't think that's the easiest thing to do, but this <laughs> yeah. is a way of doing that. Yeah, I think like Jenna was saying, yeah, a lot of schools don't even have a music program. Mm -hmm. So, but but in this case, um, teachers can just buy spectrums and just fit it in a drawer. They don't need like all the storage space. Mm -hmm. They don't need a huge budget to buy like um, you know all the, these acoustic instruments if they can't afford it. They mm -hmm. can just buy these and then they access like you know hundreds of instruments we have. Yeah. In there. And music teachers tend to teach at many different schools, too. So the portability right. of it is, is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if I'm an early educator, right, and I'm, I'm a kindergarten teacher, and I'm not, I'm trying to teach them something like letters. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you think that this is would be good for? Yeah. Absolutely. Do, I don't think we have a card, but we have a card that's like... You got a card. There yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like it's the, downstairs somewhere. <laughs> right, like where the words, there's like um, letters missing, and you have to figure out the letter, and then when you tap the color, it says the, the letter. This... I guess a similar thing is this kind of, um, this is an, an algebra example. So you can, like, basically you can kind of solve the problems in your head and then you tap on the colors to, to check your answer. I, I can set that up really quick, but um, it's kind of the same idea. You can, because you can program any sound to any color. Mm -hmm. So you can just record a letter and just program it to the color. And in our, we're releasing an education pack pretty soon and that'll have stickers in it. So you can take the colored stickers and put it on paper, like wherever you want, and it's going to be, uh, calibrated for you. Cool. And so do the spectrums recognize pretty much anything at this point? The couch, the wall? Yeah. Anything. I mean, um, certain things are more accurate, like bright colors. Dark colors are a little hard to recognize sometimes, but it can do any color. Like you can, this, six. this example is not going to make six. sense, but you, six. you know, six. this, this six is programmed six. to my six. skin color. Mm -hmm. six. Um, you can, yeah, it'll recognize any, any kind of object you tap. Six. Six. But I was just going to show this example. You, you know, like you do. <laughs> 14 minus what is 7, so then it's 7. 7. And then when you hit the color, you can kind of check your, answer. Check your answer. That's yeah. awesome. And so another really cool thing is it gives the user vacancy in checking their own stuff, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, like, you don't have a teacher coming up at you and be like, no, that's incorrect. The answer is 7. Right. They're learning that themselves, and I think that's just better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so um, uh, when it comes to, like, how you guys interact with each other, like, not everyone that we've talked to so far started their company and found mm -hmm. each other at a new ventures competition. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of walk us through, like, what was, you know, the initial, like, let's do this, right? Like, we're going to we're gonna yeah. freaking do this. Well, I think it was for the competition. We're like, we're t you know, we're going we're gonna to win this competition, which we didn't end up winning. We, we didn't, didn't, we didn't, we didn't get it. past the first round. <laughs> <laughs> we were really early, early on then. It was like this really janky prototype. You know, you know just to help you guys out, like uh, we've had like a nice running theme about how failure drives us. Yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> I think that actually motivated us more. To, I think so too. Yeah, yeah and um, yeah. I think then the big push was our, we did a Kickstarter campaign, mm -hmm. just like what we're doing now with, mm -hmm. with Stryo, but um, so that was like all hands on deck and like we were doing everything. Like Jenna was helping with customer service. We were packaging Spectrums together. So that really, from that point on, we're like, just went all in. I soldered on batteries yeah. and we like <laughs> actually made the molds for the rings. Yeah, we did a lot of. So I got to learn a little bit of like hardware stuff yeah. in the That's process awesome. as well. So that was yeah, really amazing. Real bootstrapping, huh? <laughs> yes, like, it, up really and, uh, it really was. It really was. And just yeah. trying to kill it. Really good stuff. <laughs> and so um, in terms of, we're talking today is a lot about Rover, right? It's so cool mm -hmm. to see the other products. We saw Bo Bolt earlier over there. We're mm -hmm. seeing Spectrums now. Is there any technology from the Spectrums that is in the Rover right now? Yeah, totally. Uh, the whole col color sensor system is exactly what's in rover and we spent a lot of time like perfecting color like color recognition because mm -hmm. um, it's tricky because each ring is slightly differently like the the brightness of the LED is different the sensitivity of the color sensor is a little different so they all see the colors a little differently so we have this whole kind of transformation algorithm that we do so all that technology is in rover and just this whole system of you know you tap Six. and it the, the light kind of reflects the color back into the sensor all that work is is in Rover, so you get all that packaged in, which you can do a lot of cool stuff. Like you can drive, you can create a song with um, you just drive the Rover at different speeds, and it can kind of play out a song with colors. Oh, kind of like those videos with like the marbles going down the yeah. sides, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can yeah, kind exactly. of control the tempo by changing the speed of, of how fast the Rover drives, and so you can do yeah, all that color sensor technology is, is baked into Rover. Cool. And Jenna, if you had your hands on a Rover right now, right, and you could make anything with it, what would it be? <laughs> I would, <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed to say, um, <laughs> I would make um, a device that goes into a tornado 
Uh -huh. Kind of like in the movie Twister, I like how they put like all those that. sensors up <laughs> everywhere, and like they're like go, 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 and, so, and then I would make something like that where <laughs> we could go and do it. That's awesome, you know. You know, uh, the yeah. Twister taught us a lot of things. Yeah. and it's a belt <laughs> can uh, can wrap around a pole and save Helen Hunt. Apparently, yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. hey, what about you, Stephen? What would I do with it? Um, I think I would try to make like an autonomous driving car type of thing. Mm -hmm. Like I'd probably strap on like son sonars and maybe a camera and kind of have it like um, map out the environment. And cool, man. That'd be really, I think that'd be sweet. Yeah, we, uh, we've had someone say that they went, uh, one of the people watching said that, is it, can it be a drone? Can you make a drone out of it? <laughs> oh, and wow. uh, that's a super interesting question. We'll get yeah. you that answer very shortly, but that's going to be it for us today. So if you want to leave with one thing, if you want to talk about Spectrums or how, what, you know, where we can find this, where would it be? They are available online at sphero.com slash spectrums. Yep. <laughs> awesome. There it is. All that information will be provided to you through Twitch and a lot of the streaming services as well as finding it on the website. But thank you guys for the demo. Yes, and thank of you guys course. for joining us on the couch. We're going to take you. a five-minute break, and uh, we'll be back soon.